Hi, welcome back to the Keys History and Discovery Center here on the, on the property of Islander Resort. I'm the curator Brad Bertelli and I'm here to talk a little more uh, history of our, uh, of our facility here and some of our history of, uh, of one of our exhibits. Today we're going to talk about um, perhaps the most famous or infamous, I guess is the better word for it, wrecker of the Florida Keys, our own John Jacob Hausman who was also the wrecker king of Indian Key. Um, there's a lot of stories about Hausman. Uh, most of them are true, true-ish. Lots of misinformation ab about Hausman. So I'm going to do a little bit of history of him, um, kind of in preparation for our webinar tomorrow night. If you have not signed up, I'll be talking about uh, the Indian attack at Indian Key on August 7th, 1840, and what led up to it. and um, and, John J and Jacob Hausman is one of the uh, primary characters involved in that story. And so today I'll give a little bit of background on him. He was uh, one of nine children, born in 1799 in Staten Island, New York. And he was the son of an oyster fisherman. And he grew up on the lakes and rivers of, uh, rivers of, of, of New York, so he was very comfortable on boats and became the captain of his father's 56-foot schooner, the William Henry, at a fairly young age. Um, now, when uh, one of the first stories about, about Hausman is that he stole his father's uh, schooner and came down to the West Indies in about 1822 at the age he'd have been 22, 23 years old at that time. Um, and that is one, that, that's one of the primary stories, uh, fallacies of the stories that, that are told about him. He was never ever prosecuted or his father never brought charges. There's never really any proof that he stole stole his father's boat. In fact, he would go up to Staten Island from time to time, um, visiting his family with, with, with the William Henry. So I don't think that that is an accurate assessment of, uh, of how he came down to the Florida Keys, but he did, take the, he did take the ship, whether or not he had his father's permission or not. There was never any, sto any, uh, any theft of the ship. Now, when he came, uh, we know that he was in Charleston, uh, South Carolina in 1822. There are records of him leaving uh, the, the port of Charleston in 1822. And as he came down the West Indies, he encountered the Florida Reef and wrecked. Um, not, he didn't wreck, he didn't sink. His ship got, his, the, the William Henry wrecked on the reef. And he had to go to Key West for repairs on his ship. And while he was in Key West getting his ship repaired, he witnessed the whole wrecking phenomenon, what was going on, how wrecking was certainly the ships were coming in and coming out with cargo, and that cargo was being auctioned and, and stored. So he understood that wrecking was more than just salvaging ships out on the reef. He, he understood that once those ships came back to Key West, there were a lot of other industries that were involved. Warehouses, uh, stevedores that have, w w would take the cargo off the ship and then bring to the store at a warehouse, auctioneers who would auction off the goods, um, and then those goods would go into the, into the merchant shops where they, where they would be sold. Um, so he understood that the, the big idea, the the big uh, component of of, of the wreck of, of wrecking. Now, what um, what can be totally said for sure about Hausman was that he historically ruffled Florida Keys or, or Key West feathers. Um, they had a nice monopoly going in Key West, and Hausman saw what was going on, saw the money that was being made, and wanted to create his own wrecking empire. And since he was, and, and Hausman would have come in 1822, 1823, would have been one of the very earliest of the people to come to Key West. And, and he lived in Key West for five, six, well, actually 1822 to 1830, so almost seven or eight years. So he was a, a fixture in Key West and knew, you know, knew how it operated and they knew how he operated, which was uh, he gained a reputation for being uh, less than scrupulous. Uh, and in the end, he would, well, he would watch Indian Key develop. As he was sailing up and down the Florida Reef, um, suddenly 
he saw a general store being built on the Indian Key in 1824. And that island, which was, you know, it, it's, it's midway along the Florida Reef, and he thought that that would be an excellent place for him to develop his own wrecking empire. And as he did this, he did it kind of stealthily. Um, in 1828, he, is, uh, he comes upon a wreck, uh, the Vigilant, who has a hard time getting into uh, K K Kivaka, uh, the, the marathon, uh, uh, this small port, of, uh, small community of Port Monroe on Kivaka. And this gentleman is sailing this ship, uh, the Vigilant, keeps getting stuck, ends up getting into, uh, into uh, Kiva or Port Monroe, and then Hausman shows up and agrees to pilot the Vigilant to Key West for a uh, salvage fee of 75% of the cargo. Now, among the cargo on this ship was $32,000 in coins. So, so Hausman does his job. He pilots the ship or, or gets the ship to Key West. Um, the the uh, cargo is, is auctioned off. The ship is auctioned off. And there is just taking in the thirty-two thousand dollars in gold coin, or, or not gold coins, in, in specie and coins, um, he walks away with a pretty, a pretty good chunk of change in his pocket. And the last thing we know about what happened in Key West is the captain of the vigilant and Hausman are seen sailing away aboard one of uh, aboard uh, Hausman's ship, and never the captain of the vigilant is kind of disappears from history. And what we do know is that. Um, Hausman sailed away, probably went, probably stopped in, in Charleston, South Carolina, where he would do business and and uh, visit periodically. But what he likely did was sail home to Staten Island, because it, as it just so happened, um, in 1828, that same year, his brother-in-law Thomas Gibson comes down to Indian Key and buys, makes a, a large purchase on Indian Key. He buys a two-story house that was um, on the island built for Silas Fletcher, uh, who built by Silas Fletcher, who also had built the general store. So Thomas Gibson comes down and pays $2,500 for the general store, for the two-story house, and all the rights that Silas Fletcher had on Indian Key. Um, as it turns out, that two-story house becomes a, would eventually become the Tropical Hotel, but as early as 1829, in 1828, actually, it's operating as um, as a hotel on on the island. Now, by the time that Hausman physically shows up on Indian Key, is 1830. In 1831, he buys his brother-in-law out, so he purchases the general store. He purchases the uh, two-story house, which now has a has billiards tables, which now has a nine point a, a nine point a nine pin bowling alley. Um, so it's and he pays five thousand dollars for this, and now that Hausman owns the general store, he's the primary property owner on the island, and he's the kind of guy who would be happy to give you store credit at his general store, and then when he gives you credit and you can't pay him back, he would be ha he's happy to take your your house off you, you know, as that that that, that he had given his collateral, uh, pay for the goods, and he and kind of this way he amasses a lot of interest in a lot of the properties on the island. Now, Hausman also ends up um, building a, the warehouses. Uh, there was two warehouses built on the island, three stories tall. He invests, in the end, about $200,000 of his own money uh, building. He's, you know, becomes one of the upper keys and certainly Adam Rada's uh, very first land developers. Um, so he develops Indian Key. He has this idea of, of a wrecking village to compete with, with Key West. 1836, Indian Key becomes uh, the, the, the uh, county seat for the newly uh, developed or, or newly um, talked about uh, uh, Dade County. Um, but one of the problems with, uh, with, with Hausman is that um, he's kind of a schemer. Well, not kind of a schemer. He's a total schemer. And sometimes when he would be wrecking and find uh, and be part of a salvage operation, he would pull into Indian Key, drop off some of the cargo before going to Key West to register his goods. Eventually, this, this catches up to him, and the judges in Key West uh, take, away his, take away his wrecking license, so he's no longer able to, be, to work as a wrecker. 
1835, the um, Seminole War uh, reignites, and whereas um, for the last four or five years, Indians have been coming to the island to trade at his general store. Um, now they're no, no longer able to come to come trade. So he's losing money from the Indians, from trade with the Indians. He's losing money from from uh, from his, losing his license for for wrecking, and and then uh, the Seminole War erupts, and Indian Key becomes more and more of a uh, place to where, where people are worried about the impact of of the Indian attacks as they as they creep closer and closer to the island. You know, there are attacks. There are attacks in in. Fort Lauderdale, there are attacks in Key Biscayne, there are attacks in Key Largo, as they're kind of inching down. And so, because Hausman has so much invested in the island, and he and he keeps asking for the military to help come protect his come protect the island and the people who are living there. In his heyday, remember, um, the island is home to as many as 140 people. Uh, with the it's a it's a small island, it's 11 acres. It's not not a large place. And when you go out there today and you walk around and see. The, the ruins of some of the buildings there, it's hard to imagine, you know, if you're out there with 10 or 15 people, it can seem, I don't want to say crowded, but, you know, you can feel the people there. 140 people walking around the island or living on the island, it would have been really a, 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 a large community. It would have been, you know, it, it was the second largest community in all of the Florida Keys. Um, you know, there's Key West, there's Indian Key, but now with the, now with the, um, the, the development of the Seminole War, people are starting to leave. They're, they're starting to move away because they're scared of being attacked. And the population dwindles down to about 50. In the meantime, in order, um, Hausman has, has asked for military protection. He's, he's written the governor. He's written uh, the commodore, uh, no, the, the secretary of the Navy, and, and he's not getting any responses. So he develops uh, a, 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 the Florida Militia, uh, Company B, the 10th Florida Militia. And he hires... He pays um, military wages to 24 men on the island. Um, they're paid 30 cents a day plus 50 cents for rations. He pays them in advance for 40 days. He also supplies them with, with munitions, with gunpowder, with caps, with, with, with musket balls. So, and these are all out of his general store and out of his personal and his, his warehouse where they're, they're well stocked. Um, without giving away too much of my talk tonight or tomorrow night, on, uh, on the attack at Indian Key. The Indians do attack on August 7th, and, and, and they arrive at 2 o'clock in the morning. They come to the island. Um, Hausman and his wife escape. Um, he ends up, and the island, of the 50, 50 people living on the island, seven are killed during, during the attack. Um, after, after the attack, the, the military comes and moves their, their, po their post called Fort Paulding onto Indian Key. Indian Key becomes a military outpost, Fort Paulding. And Jacob Hausman, who has now lost all his interest in the island, they say he owned the island. Hausman never owned Indian Key. He was a squatter. Everyone who lived on the island w was a squatter. The government owned the island. So when he, uh, after, after the attack, he tried to, tries to sell uh, the islands to, to, to the military, and they basically say, you know, hey, thanks a lot for investing all that money, but um, you know, thanks and goodbye. We'll we'll take it from here. Hausman, who is now pretty broke, moves back to Key West, where he's not really liked, and ends up working uh, as a wrecker. Not, uh, you know, he can't be a wrecking captain anymore. But he is um, in uh, in May of 1841. He is out working a wreck. Uh, a salvage operation with some other people, and as he is moving, it's rough weather out there, and wrecking is very dangerous work. And as Hausman is going from ship A to ship B, he um, kind of gets caught in the middle and is crushed to death. And his wife Anne um, brings his body back to Indian Key and buries him on the island, and orders a eight-foot slab of a marble slab as as a tombstone which does arrive at Indian Key. No one knows for sure if his body ever showed up on the Indian Key. There are no records of his body ever being, you know, recovered and brought to the island. Um, but we, we know for a fact that the tombstone and the grave site was there. Um, and uh, so in 1841, he's crushed to death. He dies. And that kind of wraps up the, the Jacob Hausman short abridged version of his story and his life on Indian Key. Um, if you want to learn more, it's a great, it's great, uh, really interesting story about how 
what happened, what led the, the events that led up to the attack on Indian Key. I'm going to cover that tomorrow in tomorrow's webinar. If you want to join, visit our and visit our, uh, our our Facebook page. There are directions how to sign up for the webinar. Um, if you don't sign up for the webinar, it will be posted onto our YouTube channel in the days that follow, so you'll be, so you'll be able to uh, to watch it. The advantage to being on the webinar is at the end of my presentation, you'll be able to, from the comfort of your own home, raise your hand and ask me questions about that you have, which um, are always always fun part for me. So until uh, until tomorrow night, hope to see you tomorrow night as as we talk more about the uh, Indian attack and, and the events that led up to the Indian attack at Indian Key, and we'll talk more about uh, about uh, 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 Jacob Hausman's uh, involvement in, in things that happened. A lot of people blame him for the attack uh, because at one point he did offer to, because he was broke and needed to make money, he did offer to go out and kill all the Indians for 200 bucks a head, and that is supposedly the reason that the Indians were really upset and wanted to come conquer and, and you know, come to the island and destroy it and to kill him. That was not why they were coming they, they came to the island. They came for provisions, for gunpowder, for guns, for caps, for musket balls, for food sources, for all kinds of things that were that were being stored at his warehouse and his general store. But we'll get more. In the, we'll, we'll get more into that tomorrow. So I hope everybody's safe, and uh, we will see you again tomorrow night, hopefully, and Thursday morning, uh, where we'll talk about another piece of uh, of. Um, of a Florida Keys history here at the at the uh, Keys History and Discovery Center. So thanks so much, and we will uh, we'll see you soon.